<laughs> Come on, Cody. How are you? Yes, Cody. Long time Come since we sung your song, Cody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's all right. You know what? Uh, good steps in the right direction today, you know. I, the scoreline may have flattered us a little bit, I thought. Um, Norwich almost having 60% of the ball, but, uh, you know, we did enough to get the job done. It kind of feels like almost Conte is treading water, just trying to figure out how best to cover up our weaknesses as a squad. And uh, you have to hope that in January we might get a little bit of reinforcements. But overall, you know, a 3-0 win at home, three big points. Every every match is important right now. And uh, we need to bank as many points as we can during this very busy month. Mm. Yeah, 100%. But to, in terms of today's performances, you know, there, there was some good individual performances, maybe from players we don't necessarily expect it. You know, Sessegnon came on, had a really good game. Um, obviously, Ben Davis continued his sparkling form. Sanchez had another good game. Who was who did you pick out as players that impressed you today? Well, I mean, like uh, Sean was saying, Oliver Skip was fantastic today. Just an absolute force. It seemed like he was everywhere, making sliding tackles and and gaining possession, and even had a good uh, a hand in that third goal. Um, but uh, everybody kind of had their moments at times during the game, you know. Ben Davies, what is going on with this guy? Like he just he he looks. It, there, there's a term in baseball when when a hitter is on a hot streak. They say that he looks hitterish, and honestly, every time Ben Davies has the ball in the final third, he's looking very hitterish. He looks like a dangerous player, and it's a. Uh, it's something that I don't think anybody could have predicted, and it's long may it continue because, you know, it seems like Conte's found the perfect role for him. And uh, let's face it, with Regulon picking up a knock today, Ben Davies is suddenly a player that we're now relying upon uh, almost every game. So uh, he was very impressive. How do you solve this uh, Regulon situation? Just talking about Regulon, a bit off topic, but how do you solve this situation for Thursday night? Because I wouldn't, obviously, Regulon probably a bit too soon for him to play Thursday night. Sessegnon is suspended. Uh, do you play Davis at left wing back? Yeah, you probably have to. I mean, the, o the only other option you could really picture is you have seen Matt Doherty play uh, left wing back for Ireland at different times. Mm. So he could be an option. It's not really looking great, our prospects for uh, the... Europa Conference League at this point, you know, uh, Ren are, are a very difficult team. We saw how physical they were in the first leg. Uh, we have the upper hand being at home this time, but it's, it's, it's diff you know, like you guys are the perfect example of like how the opinion is split amongst the Tottenham fan base as to how seriously we should be taking this, this tournament. Um, but now we're, we're a little bit hamstrung with, with Regulon being injured. And you have to assume that Emerson has also picked up a knock, not being on the bench at all today. So uh, for a, a coach who relies on those wing back positions to run the offense through, uh, it might prove very difficult for us on Thursday night. But uh, I, I personally hope, obviously, like all Spurs fans should hope that we win. I mean, I, I, I know that some people... Get the I get the impression from some fans that they'd rather just be out of this competition as we don't really seem to have the depth to be fighting on uh, the ver the various fronts and you know, but if we can just kind of scrape by Rens on Thursday and then maybe get a couple of players in January and increase our de our squad depth a little bit, you never know. Uh, I, I would certainly take a Europa Conference League trophy at this point. I'd take any trophy really. <laughs> Beggars can't be choosers, hey, Cody? Um, but, you know, moving moving on to the the rest of the, you know, the next four games, you know, the last three games, really winnable games, which you expect us to take all three points in. Uh, but the next four games, I mean, we're really going to see where we're at as a football club uh, right now. Where, how many points do you see us picking up over the next four games? I think, I think Sean was pretty spot on in predicting that, uh, you know, two wins, a draw and a loss. I really don't see... If we're going to have a performance like we did today, um, a team like Liverpool are going to absolutely punish us because Norwich mm -hmm. did have their fair share of chances and that was reflected in the, the expected goals tally there. You know, I think they racked up 1.3 XG and let's face it, a little bit more quality and they would have punished us for sure. We can't play like that against Liverpool. You know, um, it's nice. Don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining when we can bring our, our sort of B, B minus game and be able to take care of a lesser opponent like Norwich. But we need our best foot forward if we're going to even stand a chance against Liverpool. And I just feel like uh, our limitations are too much right now. So I can't really go out on a limb and say that we can go and, and beat Liverpool, who are absolutely flying right now. 
among the class of the league, if not the class of the league. So uh, yeah. seven points, I think, would be a pretty decent return. You know, Leicester, Leicester have been very hit and miss, but, you know, we're very hit and miss as well. So you never know what's going to happen when you go away to Brighton. Uh, they've been very sneaky and very oddly clutch here in the last few weeks, uh, scraping out draws at the, at the death with, with Neil Mope uh, seeming a coming of age a little bit of a late bloomer, but I'd be happy with seven points. Anything more than that would be uh, fantastic. And in terms of Harry Kane, uh, another blank by Harry Kane today, uh, but how did you assess his performance on a whole? I actually thought he was really bad. Um, it might not be a very popular opinion, but, uh, you know, I, I, I thought he was one of our worst players on the pitch. You know, Tanganga didn't really put up, uh, put his best foot forward, but Tanganga is a young player with uh, an obvious ceiling at the moment. Kane, we know what he's capable of doing. So to be watching him kind of bungle these various opportunities that he's given. Now, the last half hour, he kind of perked up a bit and forced a, a very good save from Tim Krul and had a very powerful shot off the left side. But in general, um, you know, he needs to be finishing his chances and taking them with a plum. And we're not seeing that right now. It's, it's a very kind of odd state that we find our squad in at the moment with some of these players who we know have like very finite limitations kind of playing out of their skin. And then other players who we know have that world class ability kind of playing at a very low level. So if Conte can start to draw out and, and rehabilitate the confidence and, and touch of Harry Kane, uh, we might be a force to be reckoned with this year, but make no mistake, if we're going to make a charge at top four, we need Harry Kane to be firing on all cylinders. And he clearly showed again today that he wasn't doing that. I thought he was. I thought he was better against Brentford personally. And uh, yeah, yep, let's just hope that uh, that he gets it going because we need him. What do you put it down to, though? Do you think, still think he has an eye on the exit door? Is it just lack of confidence? What do you put it down to with Harry Kane at the moment? I think when you're accustomed to playing at a certain level, and let's face it, Harry Kane's level is world-class, it takes a certain amount of hard work and effort to maintain that class. And there's no question in my mind that Harry Kane took his foot off the gas for a second in the summer and was not happy with not being able to force a move away and, and however you want to put it. And when you're when you're competing at the very top level of football, in terms of individual performance, you simply cannot afford to take your foot off the gas. And I think Harry Kane is finding it very difficult to find his foot on that pedal again. Um, that's that's just one of the things when you put when you set your bar that high, you have to continue on and you have to be as hardworking every single day. There's literally there's no room for look at look at Cristiano Ronaldo at 36 years old. You know he goes out, scores a brace. What does he do? He goes and trains again after the game. And that's the level of commitment that it takes to maintain that class. And it takes a long time to get back after you take your foot off the gas. So I think uh, it might. And hopefully it's just a matter of time for Kane. I don't want to uh, think the worst and think that this might end up being a lost season. One goal in uh, 13 games now, it's just not good enough from Kane. But uh, I do think that since Conte's arrival, we've seen a definite change in demeanor, attitude, body language, and application. And for me, if he's if he can just find his foot on the gas pedal again, he will get back to form and we'll, we'll see the Harry Kane that we've accustomed to. Be, been accustomed to. Yeah!